Hi, this is Jim Jamison from theprovince.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Canucks playoff possibilities, what they need to do to be successful, and who they might face. Okay, let's talk about the Canucks. It's not really rocket science what they need to do to be successful in the playoffs. It's, uh, it's a formula that I think most other teams in the league are going to try to follow. The Canucks have had pretty good success in their power play in the last uh, 10 games or so since the trade deadline, bringing over Derek Roy. Uh, the return of Ryan Kessler has certainly helped. They need to be able to generate uh, offense from their power play during the playoffs. It's key. Uh, it, was, it was really big uh, in 2011. Of course, it ran out of gas in the final. Last year, they had real trouble against the Kings in the first round. It was a big factor in their exit. They also have to be very tight defensively. They have to get good goaltending. Hopefully, Corey Schneider is uh, only uh, somewhat injured and can come back. And, and if having Roberto Luongo as well is a big, a big plus for them, having two really good goalies to go to. They also need to have a very physical bottom six, particularly their fourth line. The Kings showed last year in the playoffs that that's a key to success. You've got to be able to get out there and bump and grind. Let's talk about some of the possible matchups. Let's start with Minnesota, uh, which I think is an unlikely one, but it's still possible. The, uh, the Canucks, I think, would be happy to play Minnesota. Uh, would be one of their preferred choices. They've had a lot of success against Minnesota over the years. But with the uh, addition of the two free agents, uh, Ryan Suter and uh, Zach Parise, they've uh, vastly improved their team. Still, Minnesota has been somewhat inconsistent this season, and the Canucks have had some success uh, beating their goaltender, Nicholas Backstrom. So I think uh, from that perspective, uh, that they'd be happy to get that, but I think it's unlikely it'll happen. Let's look at the St. Louis Blues, another possibility. This would be one of the Canucks' less favored opponents for the first round. Uh, the Canucks played the Blues uh, last week, and it was it was a gong show out there. It was uh, David Backus, uh, the, the Blues shutdown center, is a big guy, he's 6'3", 230 pounds, and he is playing very nasty these days, a very physical guy. Uh, he would, if he was lined up against either Ryan Kessler's line or the Sedin's line, uh, there would be, it would be a very physical, uh, a lot of physical confrontations out there. The Blues are a big physical team, not the kind of team I think anybody really wants to meet in the first round because even if you beat them, it's going to take a lot out of you. So uh, I think that uh, the idea that uh, they want to be very careful about Chris Stewart, another their leading scorer, and also about uh, Brian Elliott, their goaltender, who uh, has had a bit of an inconsistent season, but when he's on, he can be very good. The next team we'll look at is the San Jose Sharks, a team the Canucks probably wouldn't mind playing so much, although they are still a big team. They did lose uh, defenseman Doug Murray and winger Ryan Klo at the trade deadline, two of their bigger players. The Sharks are still a pretty gritty team, uh, not as physical uh, probably without those guys, but uh, I think that the, the Canucks really have to be concerned about uh, Logan Couture, their, their young player who's a terrific, uh, one of the best young players in the league really. Uh, he'll be a, a, a load to take on, and certainly uh, Joe Thornton at 33. Uh, he's always declined, I think, seven goals this year, which is, uh, uh, you know, a decline for him. But uh, you know, he's a, he's a guy. I'm sure that at this point in his career, he really wants to make a mark. So I think he'll be very motivated. Uh, and the goaltender Antti Niemi is capable of playing very well. So they have to get some pucks past him. Last but not least, the Stanley Cup champion L.A. Kings the team that bounced the Canucks out of the playoffs in the first round last year uh, rather unceremoniously. So I think this is a, an unlikely possibility, but it could happen. Uh, it would be something the Canucks probably would not want because the Kings are a very physical team, physical team throughout. They skate well. They have uh, all kinds of subplots here. Dustin Brown is playing very well. He'll be back from his two-game suspension. Uh, everybody can remember him flattening Henrik Sedin last year during the playoffs and what a, what a uh, pain in the you-know-where he can be. Uh, Jonathan Quick uh, hasn't had the season he had last year. He, you know, Jonathan Quick was their best player in the playoffs. He was the reason they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, he hasn't had the consistency this year, but if he can crank it up, uh, the sky's the limit for the Kings. Certainly, they've got virtually their whole team back. Jeff Carter has uh, just been filling the net this year. He has 26 goals. So he's uh, a guy that uh, had come over in the trade deadline uh, last year and was sort of finding his way in the finals, but uh, uh, playoffs. But he uh, this year uh, he's a legitimate uh, uh, goal-scoring threat on the wing. So you really have to watch out for him. They'll miss Willie Mitchell. He's been out the whole season, and will miss the entire playoffs. But uh, 
the Kings have a lot of depth, so they'll be a, a very tough opponent if the Canucks do draw them in the first round.